Hello, hello. Welcome to the Knight's Arm. We are starting a new series in Victoria 2 as the United States. We're going to try to complete a little bit of the historic events that the United States has uh, been through during this time period in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And so it's going to be interesting playing, uh, battling the South, the CSA, the Confederates that split off, uh, unifying the country again, completing Manifest Destiny, reaching the Pacific Coast, and we'll do some colonization in Africa. We'll try to ally ourselves with the Brits, so I won't do anything weird in which I'm, I go to war with England again. Uh, but I'll definitely try to expand South. Uh, domestically, I'll try to expand down into Mexico, claim some land there, um, and we'll see where this takes us. And I'll also try to claim a lot of islands on the Pacific Ocean so we can get closer and closer to Japan. And who knows, we might even invade Japan, but that's in the long run. Now, as far as the mechanics in this game, believe it or not, Victoria 2 is actually a game that I fell back into playing after I started playing EU4, um, and this is several years ago where I didn't really understand a bunch of the mechanics you in EU4, not nearly as much as I do now. And so when I first started playing EU4, I had no idea what I was doing. And I sort of wanted a little something a little bit more easier. Now, arguably for me, Victoria 2 is a lot simpler, a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to play than EU4. Um, although, I mean, now that I'm looking back at it, I probably didn't, I thought I understood what I was doing, but maybe not nearly as much as I should know in order to have a successful campaign. So we're going to jump in. I sort of know most of the mechanics, but this is going to be sort of a, another learning experience just because um, I forgot a lot of stuff. So we'll go ahead and jump into single player here. Now, something I do not like about this game is how bad the map looks when you zoom in. So the zoomed in function of the map is sort of a bit different than this. I mean, I, if the game was just configured this, the way it is now and it looks the way it is now, where it has the maps here, I mean, you could clearly see the countries. There's really no stupid terrain in the way. It looks really nice, but obviously this game was 2010, so there was no fancy graphics or not in, uh, you know, or anything of that sort in this game, or that Paradox would have thought to implement and all the terrain is two-dimensional which makes the game look really dated um, you know if, if the game were just like this and what's funny enough also is that there really aren't any graphic mods in this game you know unlike EU4 there's plenty of graphic mods but in Victoria 2 I don't know why there aren't any maybe it's just some, the way that the map files are configured it's very hard to alter them or it's nearly impossible to alter them but yeah so the, the map once we select our nation we'll go ahead and take a look at that and I'll show you what I mean by the two-dimensional terrain so here's the US you can see Texas is still a sovereign nation an independent Republic we could even play as Texas and then expand but it's going to be really hard and me not knowing 100% of the mechanics it is going to be impossible so let's play as the US we need to I mean I ideally I'd want all of this but what always ends up happening and I remember when I played the US in the past is Great Britain always beats me to it, you know, one of these provinces. So we'll see if we can do that. I definitely want to get these first before Mexico takes them. Although I might have to sacrifice these and go after these because I will, you know, in the future go into a war with Mexico in which I could just claim these later on or especially these two here. So it's going to be interesting what I might do. I might, again, let, you know, have a priority here because there's no way I'm getting into war with the great britain and you know first of all logistically i can't they just have way big of an army there's no way for me to battle them and also i want to ally them they're really strong and i want to sort of stick historically um but you know you know invading mexico won't be historic i mean gaining this from mexico will be but i also want to expand down here because there's a lot of resources down here and it's, it's central america is pretty nice and who knows i could even expand it to south america so this won't be historic, but I mean, if I'm going to change the course of history a little bit, I don't want to go in a war with Great Britain again. So that's that. 
There's also a lot of little islands. Obviously, Hawaii I want. Hawaii is still a primitive, independent nation. There's all these islands here, and I'll definitely go into war with Japan. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, nobody owns these yet. These are still uncolonized. What about this? That's Japan. So it's going to be interesting to see how I can colonize all these little bits and pieces of islands here. So let's go ahead and select the U.S., and let's hit play. So we are a secondary power, believe it or not. We're not a primary power or a great power, excuse me. We're secondary power. We have seven prestige. Now the, the way that this is calculated is a sum of this, but it's easier to get prestige up. Prestige is a big factor in, in this, although it's technically just this summed up. So all these three sort of have an equal play in, in, in what determines your power. But a lot of people say that prestige is, is important. Um, so we have Liberia, which is, oh yeah, so I didn't mention Africa. We have, I believe, where is Liberia? This is embarrassing. Where is it? Not here. I was certain it's going to be somewhere over here. If I could just click on it, will it bring me to it? No. I am almost positive it's somewhere over here, somewhere in the Ivory Coast. No. Oh, okay. So I, I thought it would show my nation, but it's still it's still an in, quasi independent. It's my puppet, but it's still not integrated yet. So it's right here. Okay. No, that's not it. So this is it right here. So this is my puppet. It is my satellite, which is weird. I thought I can't have satellites, but I'm. Assuming you can have satellites as a secondary nation as well. Oh, I thought it was only great powers so I could do satellites. We'll see. And so we'll definitely expand it to Africa. Obviously, a lot of resources. There's going to be, I mean, this game also has an importance on the, the scramble for Africa, which is, you know, the, the event where a bunch of countries try to claim as much of Africa as possible. Despite it historically not being profitable. I mean, any colonization really for the European great powers. I mean, there's this myth that they, they did colonization, they exploited people, They, but again, it was, they lost a lot of money. And that's precisely why the United Kingdom started to break apart and, and, and grant these countries their independence because it just, it's not profitable at all. And it wasn't profitable from the start. So, I mean, well, Southern America sort of profitable, but Africa wasn't profitable at all, really, I mean, Again, the resources, there are some over here, but so Southern America was is more profitable. It's just, again, it's not profitable having to manage an entire nation in another continent um, and having to deal with your own wars and your own homeland. So we'll go ahead and start with the U.S. Enough library. Uh, so, the, so I was about, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but there are some rumors murking around that there may be a Victoria 3 in the near future. Not the near, near future, like not next year, but maybe two, three years. Uh, we might see a Victoria 3, which is really interesting. I really want to see this game um, improved on. I want to see another iteration. And I'll show you what I mean by outdated. First of all, the you could see there's not that much detail. And when you zoom in, you could see what this two-dimensional... Uh, terrain looks like and you can see the mountains they're just like little triangles sketched into the map but it's still flat so yeah and you can see i could go almost all the way off the map but yeah this game definitely needs an overhaul and you can see the the soldier icons are pretty pretty blocky yeah and there's really no detail at all in, in any of the cities or anything so we need to go ahead and just right away let's grab this i think i should grab all right i can't grab this right yeah so i have to do this first so i'm going to do core d alin let's grab that so if nobody competes with your expedition by 1836 i can go ahead and establish a or I can send colonists and then there's a bunch of other steps so I can do 
Baker City, which is interesting. I can even do Portland, which I'll probably want to do Portland just so I can get a strong foothold on the on the Atlantic, just in case um, Britain does come and and annex some of this, which I hope really hope it doesn't because I don't want to go into war with Britain. But let's go ahead and just grab um, Oregon here. Now, how many do I have? How many colonists do I have? It doesn't really say how many colonists I have. There's really no... So there's one here, one here. I have colonial power. Available 118. Currently invested 160 power tied up in maintenance. So I gotta increase my, um, my maintenance for, I believe it's, somewhere here it's maybe is it part of administration i don't know so let's get our administration up our country's administration right now is 26.7 percent uh it determines the amount of the effectiveness of social reforms and tariffs so if we could get this up this will increase our also our crime so there's definitely crime fighting yeah so we could increase our crime um and It'll increase the effectiveness of social spending as well as some of the uh, some of the social reforms. These will become more. I guess there's more of a modifier, improved modifier. Although it doesn't really say it here. Effectiveness of social reforms and tariffs, and then also my tariffs could increase. So let's go ahead and get this up to 100 percent. I 42 percent literacy which is somewhat decent i mean ideally you want it to get up to 50 above 50 or even at least 60 so i guess we could do that although we do need to get prepared to go to war with um um the south which is going to happen this is 1836 i believe it's 60 something 1864 68 66 let's see when the civil war starts and again this game I think stays true to the roots where it actually started. When did the Civil War... Yeah, so 1861. So we still have 30 years to play around with, which is plenty of time. So I guess we can increase our... Edu let's increase taxes on everybody. Um, let's go to increase our education budget just a little bit. We'll do it at 80%. Uh, military spending so this this is our sort of maintenance over here so if we lower this our morale goes down this is actually how many troops we get so this will increase our total um, military um, well how many units we have total how many brigades yep we have a navy, we could build Marby. We'll definitely mobilize when we go to war with the South, although it should be somewhat easy war. We do have some of it somewhat, excuse me, of a big navy. We could probably get rid of some of these. We don't really need transports now, really. And we could build them later on. Let's see how much our navy is taking up. Our navy is taking up well, I mean I could lower this down. Yeah, and I could probably even get rid of some of them. Spending on evil 30, or the lowest I could do is 30%. And there's definitely probably a policy that I could lower this down more. Okay, so, yeah, so this is, right now it's taking up 56, so if I increase this, yeah, so right now it's 56 and 23. Let's get rid of some of our transports, and we'll just build them later. Let's get rid of this guy over here. Although I don't think our transports use up that much maintenance. Is there any way I could check now? This will just save me one. Let's go ahead and get rid of you. Good there. This one total. Can I see how much everything? Yeah, the, the Man of Wars, I believe, are these massive ships that... Let's get rid of some of them, actually. Uh, where are most of them concentrated? Over here. So let's just get rid of this whole 
thingy here. Um, let's get rid of you. Okay, so that should be good enough. We have some good men. Now, I'm not sure which of the men. So these are from Hartford, Philadelphia, Charleston. This is Syracuse, Harrisburg, Concord. I believe if I go to military and I do build army. Well, I can't even see the army, but there, when the Civil War kicks in, if I have men from a certain area of the South, then they will convert. So I have to be careful of that. Did you guys see that? I, I think I'm seeing some like weird artifact and some flickering over here. And I noticed that also in my previous... Yeah, I'm seeing it also over here. Yep, this thing is going to get noticeable. I'm seeing it all over here. I'll fix it in the next episode. So you can see Mexico already started colonizing over here. They have over there. And now there might be... They're going to probably claim that. This is fine if they claim it. Because I'm going to go to war with Mexico. Again, my priority is to make sure Britain doesn't get over here. So I can be friends with them. And we can help tackle uh, Mexico. Although I want to become a great power... We are a great power. Why did it say we weren't before? In the home screen, it said we were a secondary power. Yeah, because I figured the only way for me to sphere countries is if I was a great power. So yeah, I think I was probably looking at something else. So let's see who we could sphere. I definitely want to sphere Hawaii. Let's sphere Hawaii. Um, let's sphere Hawaii. Let's also sphere. So, are you the USCA? I wonder what this stands for. The United States, United States of Central America, something like that. I could be totally wrong. What does the USCA stand for? The Federal Republic of Central America. But I don't know why it has the U.S. Oh, the United States Cattlemen? No. <laughs> That's completely something else. Um, also called the United Province of Central America. It was a Republican democracy. Okay. Yeah, so they're a democracy here. So what we could do is we could also... Spain is definitely going to try to influence. We have to beat Spain to it. Uh, but got to be careful so that when... I forgot what, you know, how much it uses to discredit. This uses 25. So Spain could just discredit me right now. Or I could discredit it. Uh, I can also expel advisors. This removes the discredit effect. So once I get 50, I could, if I get 50 enough while I'm being discredited, I could do this, which removes, but this is pretty useless also. I think ban MC is a good one where it removes the discredit as well as um, it prevents them from doing any diplomatic relationship for a year and a year should be enough for me to, you know, sphere them. And we could also... add them to our sphere so they're cordial with us so I mean once we get this to 100 oh no I'm sorry once we get this to 50 I believe we could increase opinion to friendly is cordial I think cordial and then it's friendly yeah and then I can add to sphere which uses up 100 okay what about Texas Will you accept an alliance? They will accept. So let's go ahead and ally ourselves with Texas. There should be an event where I could um, integrate it. Where are the events? Is it under politics? Yeah, decisions. So we have Manifest Destiny, which we gain cores on Texas and everything. But I don't want to go to war with Texas. The USA will gain all as core. I don't really want to do that. So this gives me some claims on that. We could do this. I need to own that. 
Um, is this the event where Texas gets integrated? Search it up. How to integrate Texas Vic 2. Yeah, I definitely want to integrate Texas. Annexation is easy as checking off the decision. So there's a decision. Yeah, so there should be a decision here. Why is this not notified? Many within our academic circles feel that the present direction of our academy suffers from an undue bias and that we should return to more traditional academic profile oh that's probably why because it wants us to change to traditional academy which gives us no bonuses and it lowers our prestige lowers our research points yeah so i don't, I don't know why anybody would do that but there should be a decision here to integrate it hmm we're democracy we are free trade which lower which increases oh no minimum tariffs minus 100% so our minimum increases but our maximum decreases I wonder why it's minus if my minimum can go down a little bit further isn't that a good thing technically not we could leave tariffs at zero so again, the more we increase tariffs, tariffs impose an extra cost on imported goods with the proceeds going to the national treasury. Negative tariffs, tariffs can be used to help subsidize imports for anyone in your nation. So right now the middle class, 36% are getting none of their needs. And it's mainly um, if I could look at my population here. I feel like, yeah, so here are the nationalities. I think it's the Yankees, or is it the Dixies? I think it's the Dixies that convert into rebels when the South secedes. We'll see. So what was I doing? I was looking at to see who's getting their needs. I want to look at only the the middle class so let's deselect all so the the middle are from artisans all the way up to officers from artisans to officers so let's look at from yeah these aren't even in order I thought these would be in order so here are artisans. Okay, let's let's see if we can memorize this. Um, tax the middle all our officers, clerics, clergymen, bureaucrats, artisans. Let's see if I remember that. So we have artisans, bureaucrats, no, no, clergymen, clerics, officers. Is that it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm forgetting someone. Officers, clerics, clergymen, bureaucrats, artisans. Artisans, bureaucrats, clergymen. Oh, did I miscount? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're good. So now I could see who's not getting their life needs there's one person who's not getting their life needs or any needs but why does it say over here that 36 percent are getting none of their needs the artisans oh so it's just telling me right there it's the artisan so let's get this out of the way so these are 
but why is it showing me let's deselect show me only artisans okay good These are getting their life needs. Why is it saying they're not getting any of their... Um, none of their needs. Hmm. Okay, so 35% life needs. So, I don't know, we'll deal with that. This is good. They're getting their life needs, their everyday needs. I'm assuming life, everyday needs are better than life needs. So these are what I need to live. This is what I need every day. So blue is good. And what are the luxury? The luxury are the, uh, this light blue here. Okay. So I think we have the, this setup pretty good. We could probably lower our maintenance for our military as well. Yeah, let's put it to 50%. Okay, so since we are, um, so, all right, I was going down this. So we're free trade. So it lowers our minimum, which, I mean, we just have more leeway, I guess. And we have our increase plus 25%. Okay, we have interventionism. So we are, we can, we have a mix of capitalism and socialism in a way. So we can build factories as well as the free market doing it also. Okay, so this is, I guess, in the, in terms of the game, because the game makes it that capitalists build factories for you, but sometimes they don't get the market right, which is very ironic, because it makes you, the player think that they could predict where the factories go um, in a more efficient way than the market can, which obviously is just the game trying to give you more choice and in, in to building factories because if you could just let the market do and then there's no point in you actually going in and building it so this is in terms of the game in terms of the game this is the best position because you get to build factories as well as some others that are built so if the capitals don't build the right factory you could um destroy it or you could just let it close and sometimes the capitals get it right and obviously you're going to get it right every time because you could just see what is being produced there and then what factory you need now we have moralism. Church and state are a single body and religious minorities face discrimination. Okay, so I guess we're, we're that. So this might, um, we'll see some of the effects. It shows, it sh once we have some decisions to make, this is going to, we could see what this affects as well as the other ones. Citizenship policy, limited citizenship. So only people of your nation's primary and accepted cultures are allowed to vote. Okay. So our assimilation rate goes up and accepted culture. So obviously we want more citizens so that we can gain more. Uh, we can do reforms faster, I guess. And we have war policy jingoism, which is good. It's just our supply consumption goes up. So I think jingoism is the best policy so far. Or there's also pro-military. So I think pro-military is also the best. Mobilization impact. Oh no, jingoism is better. You get 400 uh, percent cb acquisition yeah i mean jingoism is the best so that's obviously our main goal to keep at jingoism um and that's pretty much it so we're 100 percent conservative oh are we not we're a democracy but we're conservative okay i thought we were democratic all right let's look at our production real quick so new england is producing some fabric so these are I mean most of these should be good let's see yeah we don't have the search feature here I actually have to go here so new England all right do I really need to search where New England is I really I pulled a that, that was a dumb move obviously New England is over here so the New England is this entire thing over here although in real life it's actually this whole thing is New York considered New England? I don't think so. I think it's Connecticut and up New England. So we produce timber here. Yeah, so I mean, it's probably not a smart idea to have a fabric factory over there. 
current employees, we only have 375. But we're, we're making a profit somehow. I'm not sure. In order to make, well, in order for the maintenance, we need cement and machine parts, which we also need to make. So when we have a couple of factories scattered around, we do have one that's needing some investors to build railroads. Yep. We need some limber, or timber, excuse me, timber, steel, and cement. I could probably subsidize this and just have it build. Uh, sure. Build that subway. So here are our production. So this production overview of your country also shows the production output of each of our producers. So we have some military goods that we make. So we have ammunition, which which is being produced. We have small arms, which is being produced. Artillery, canned food, uh, and we obviously can't discover those. But those are the military goods here. And is this only of our country? Yes, yeah, so there's obviously more goods out there. But this is just of our country and what we've unlocked so far. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, military goods, we're pretty much good. We don't have any shortage or anything. Um, and these are the artisans. Although we do want our workers to start building stuff because they could do it much more efficiently and we'll definitely get a greater quantity. And yeah, the workers are the ones that work in the factory. So we have artisans that build some of our stuff. But if we get if we can get a factory and get the workers to build it, it's way more productive. You can see here, the workers building it instead of the artisans. These artisans are just locals, you know, small businesses doing it. Which is, again, not reflective of the real world. This is just how it is in the game. Um, and what I find really interesting, again, I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but what I find really interesting is how the trading game in this game, I mean, Paradox itself admits that they don't even know some of the complexities uh, in the algorithm. Which is interesting because there's always this attempt that the economy is sort of, you know, we could manage it. This is especially what, what bureaucrats like to believe and what governments like to believe in that, you know, economies are easily managed. We could micromanage it, you know, the, the, we could easily look at it from a micro and a macro level, or even more importantly, a micro level. And we could guess the market. We could help stimulate it. We could help contract it. We can help cool it down. We could help um, heat it back up. And it's all a myth because... The economy is a extremely complex system because it's essentially millions and millions of people, everybody technically, everybody's global consciousness working together. That's essentially what the economy is because you're trying to guess what people's intentions are, what they want, what they're thinking, or what they think they want. Excuse me. And this idea that the government can come in and know what people think and what people want and produce it more efficiently than the people themselves doing it is really bonkers and a perfect example gaming related is paradox where they try to somehow fit it into this game where they have this um production mechanism we'll go to trade yeah so they can have this production mechanism here in which you know countries could um trade and it's all based on algorithms and you could somehow come in and try to manipulate the market and it just completely didn't work so the economy in this is really sort of a, a void of just failed, it's a failed attempt at trying to create a real world economy. And how did it fail? Pretty much the algorithm gets so complex to the point where nobody could know what the heck to do. Nobody can manage it. Nobody could understand it. Um, and obviously it's a fraction of what the you know, not even a fraction. I mean, it's it's this minuscule amount of what the actual economy is. So, Paradox's attempt at making this somewhat small economy with all these nations here, with all these obviously limited pops or, yeah, pops here. Are they called pops in this game? I think they're called pops. I'll just call them pops. So, 
with all these you know limited number of pops it already got confusing right i mean how many pops are there in the whole game you know it says it here but these are only well there's a size here but we'll just count this as a single unit so i mean let's just say there's hundreds of thousands or thousands of pops in this game maybe not hundreds of thousands maybe a thousand pops right um and already the the a you know paradox's algorithm got so complex that they had no idea what to do so this is a good reflection of the world how nobody could really micromanage the economy the economy is sort of this immaterial thing that operates and it's basically culmination of everybody's um thoughts and ideas and their intuitions and what they want their desires their needs their wants and there's no way for anybody to manage that on a, on a massive scale something i just realized is we don't have this tip of main here and i think there's event an event excuse me where they give it to me i am positive there's an event where they give it to me because i remember it happening to me before but if we're missing that tip of main now i guess it's whatever And we're also missing, are we missing this? No, this is New, Br New Brunswick. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let me pull up the map. Am I, I'm like positive we have, yeah, we don't have New Brunswick. Okay, so this is, uh, we're missing this tip of Maine here. Caribou. Um, yeah. That's interesting. I did not realize that Canada actually bordered us over here. I thought we it was just all, you know, we were landlocked, uh, surrounded by water. Excuse me. Okay, so let's end the episode here. We did a lot of planning. Let's. Oh no, we didn't do our technology. Yet. Let's extend it. Extend this episode just a bit. Excuse me. The following states have unemployed factory workers: four hundred and eighty-eight unemployed craftsmen in New York. So these need to get. Um, some workers so we could probably do this priority and set a priority here so let's fill this let's fill that up there's a cement factory in New York why does cement look like that is it just like in a bag I think those are just bags and it's leaking a little bit of cement that's the icon and there are wow there are 6,636 unemployed craftsmen in Massachusetts um yeah, I mean, we probably need to build another factory. Wait a second, why can't I build factories? Civilized, two out of eight factories, and say build factories? No. Can I not build factories as an interventionist? Where's that screen? This, in general, this is a free market, but the government reserves the right to intervene when the national interest requires it open closed factory so i can open and close oh so i don't think i can build factories so there's another all right i'm sorry there's another step so you have state capitalism which is or no or i think that's what it's called let's look at the economic policies for victoria 2 economic policy vic Victoria 2, yeah. I forgot the how it went. So you have... Okay, so you have laissez-faire, which is... You can't do anything. Literally, you cannot do anything. You can't invest, you can't subsidize, you can't do anything. Then you have... What I have is interventionism, which is... I can expand, I can close, I can open, I can destroy. I can build railways, I can subsidize. Uh, but I can't actually build new factories. And then you have state capital capitalism, excuse me, where I can actually build factories and it and capitals build factories as well. So I think state capitalism is the best. I, I, I let me take that back. Intervention is not the best. State capitalism is the best. That's the one where I could um, build factories as well as the capitals building it. And then planned economies, you could do everything. Capitalists don't build factories. Um, yeah, so. That's that. But the problem with planned economies is technically you could build your own factories, but then you lose foreign investment. So foreigners can't invest in your country and build factories for you also. Um, 
But then again, in state capitals and foreign investment doesn't happen either. So we have to be careful. Yeah, we have to be careful because state capitalism, basically the only benefit is that it allows us to build factories. And we can't, in, uh, investors don't expand them. Yeah, so I have to be careful. And foreign investment is not allowed in state capitalism. So we need to get state capitalism because I want to build factories on my own. But we're going to have to suffer some downsides. Um, and then there's unemployed so there where is massachusetts right there yeah that's a lot so i mean i just what can i do i mean i could probably do something like this let's just put one of you there and then 152 in new england hmm. the question is can they move can they migrate i don't think they can so i have 152 unemployed here oh so it says the number over here also so i don't need to keep going up there um so clerks also i can use up some clerks here to i guess make the factory more efficient i'm assuming so we have a lot of unemployed let's prioritize these let's do that okay i guess that's that Foreign investment, yeah, so I can see what's happening there. Um, let's set a let's set some national focuses. What do I want? Hmm. I should probably encourage bureaucrats. I can do more capitalists. Hmm. I wish they could tell me which, what each one does. Is there any screen? Um, let's. We just have to search it up. Um, so let's look at what bureaucrats do. They represent the administration. So if I increase this. Um, my administration goes up to 100%. For maximum administration efficiency, we need at least 1.1% bureaucrats. How many do we have? Can I check how many I have in total? I have zero percent. Uh, I'm sorry, select all. I have zero point three. So let's go ahead and encourage bureaucrats there so I can get some um, administration efficiency, which will help me with um, my tax efficiency. Yeah, my tax efficiency is pretty bad. Six thirty six percent. Yeah, um, let's go ahead and then also to pay the clergy and to produce research points. So what do clergymen do? Clergymen are the educators. So they increase my literacy, they reduce the consciousness, and they produce research points. How many research points do I produce? Clergymen provide 1.10. Clerics provide, yeah, so clergymen provide the bulk of the research points, and I definitely want more research points. So I'll, def, I'll do, um, what's my clergyman here? Zero points, I'm sorry, my bureaucrats, 0 0.3. So I definitely want to increase that. Let's go ahead and do I only have two, so we could probably do some clerks there. Oh no, what do clerks do? So the clergymen increase education. Clerks uh, are the skilled laborers at factories. Craftsmen are unskilled laborers. 
How many uh, clerks do I have? I have zero clerks. So I, just, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to worry about that now, I guess. I mean, we can, but... I could also uh, help encourage industry. We'll definitely want to get some more national focuses, but let's go ahead and do, hmm, clerics or, what should I do, clergymen? Or bureaucrats, hmm. Let's do clergymen because I'm going to already get a bulk of the clergymen from New York because Pennsylvania has half the population. If there was a lot, then I could probably do both bureaucrats, but there's no point in doing it here. All right, let's go to technology. Excuse me. Um, our supply limit increases. So we could do that. And this will also give us some medicine stuff, right? Now, supply limit, is that how many troops I could have, right? Yeah. I should probably do that. Let's research medicine. Um, let's look at what the supply limit does real quick. Is Because I don't know if that's talking about how many troops I could have on land, or is that... I think that's what they mean, or how many troops I could have in total. Oh, yeah. Supply limit, excuse me. Supply limit only affects how many troops I could have, so I probably don't want to do that. Education efficiency, colonial migration. We could do romanticism. Let's do positive, or should I do... Let's do ideological thought. I want to get that extra one. Yeah. Plurality goes up. Let's do ideological thought. We'll probably do romanticism next and then positivism. Let's do this. Okay. Is that it? I don't have any infamy. That's basically my aggressive expansion. Suppression points. How many... Like, if I can, my ability to suppress people, so I can get some of these from bureaucrats. Um, but then I have meetings allowed and free press, which reduces it. Yeah. I cannot enact social, political reforms as well as social reforms at all. So these are pretty much inaccessible to me, and they pretty much go automatically because of my... My party, my ruling party, I think. Okay, and as a democratic party, I can't even build factories. So even if I do, yeah, because, I've, all right, never mind, I'm sorry. This democratic party is tied to this interventionist economic policy. So I, I probably want to get rid of this interventionism. Although, can I change this as well as be, still being part of the Democratic Party? I'm not sure. And this is Southern Democrats, which are more socialists. Yeah, build factories. Yep. Okay. You could hold an election. Should I? I, I thought it was going to give me a conversation. Confirmation screen, excuse me. Um, all right, I guess we can hold an election. That part is unrealistic because, I mean, we could... This, in real life, I mean, it's automatic. Every four years here, I could just... I have to manually do it. All right, we could release some nations. Nope. All right, so that's it for this episode. Extremely long. We had to get through everything. But that's it. We'll unpause the next episode. Um... And so, so by holding an election, I can change 
some of my policies. I believe so. But if I'm still a Democrat, then I can't really do anything. Hmm. There's no difference between these two. Except they're for full citizenship. Yeah, I would probably want it. Oh, but then they get the, the hit from the war policy. So this goes up, but then my war, war policy takes a hit. Alright, we'll see. Um, so that's it for this episode. We are going to unpause next episode. We're going to colonize as much of this. Make sure Britain doesn't take Oregon over here. Or Washington, excuse me. Um, and we'll see what happens. We'll let Mexico take these if we don't care. Because we will go to battle with them soon. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.